He is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning and welcome to United Methodist Temple Easter morning online service. It's a new concept for us. But we're so happy that you've joined us to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, the early Christians had obstacles that were placed before them just because they wanted to gather and worship God. Well, we have an obstacle that's been put before us, but we also will always find a way to join together in service. Remember, the church is not just this beautiful building, but the church is the people. It's us, it's you and me. We are the church. So, today and in the coming weeks, please join us every Sunday morning for worship. And hopefully before long, we can join together as a congregation and sing and pray and to worship the risen Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So again, welcome. And now, first of all, wherever you are, stay safe. And if you join in singing the Easter hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. God bless.
Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in prayer. O Lord of heaven and earth, word of light eternal, you have overcome the world. You have broken the bondage of sin and death. We stand and sing in awe. We could have no words for this day, but you have been with us. You have broken bread with us. You have walked the road with us. You have called us by name. You have wept with us. You have rejoiced with us. And where we have suffered and struggled, you have suffered with us and struggled with us. While you have been with us and apart from us, you have shown us that even when we are apart, you are together with us. So, although we are apart, we are together still. With you and with many, we share this mortal life no longer. Still, we are together, and you are with us still. Love sounds like music in heaven and shines eternal light upon the earth and even more upon the heart. That we may follow in Jesus the life and love of the resurrection that we may be a living witness to that love in this mortal and fragile and temporary world. We pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever, and ever, and ever. Amen. Joy, 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 joy,
reading of the Gospel of St. John in the 20th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said in all these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, thank you for being with me, especially on this day. I know that in some way we ought to be standing on a lakeside, or we ought to be coming crawling through the night toward the dawn to celebrate Easter. I know that we ought to be meeting in the sanctuary, and there ought to be, you know, food afterwards. Celebrations are like that. And here we are. And while I have wonderful food here, I don't have you here. So we have to trust this moment, that something larger than this happens. And to that moment, let us commit ourselves in prayer. Open your word to us, O God, and open us to your word. Let it resound in us and transform us and through us the world. Amen. I've been doing this for 38 years, and every year I try to say something new about Easter. And except saying Easter is new, I don't know what else to say. But let me try this story and see if it doesn't help us in this time. I think there's something important here for us today. You see, Jesus speaks to Mary. He is present to her as he calls her by name. He was present with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. He was present by the sea. He was present in other examples the scripture doesn't even mention. And yet, he was not recognized until something happened, until he spoke her name, until he broke the bread until he was in the upper room and had passed through the walls and doors and he was among them even though everything was locked and that they knew him and saw him. That's how that works. See, there is something about eternal life that is different between, about, that's different than life and death. I think we've come into a time, especially with the coronavirus and literally hundreds of thousands of people dying, we've come into a time where death creeps back in in a non-analgesic way, in a non-protected way, in a, in a way that we can't escape. It was that way in the Middle Ages. It happened a lot. People knew they lived in the shadow of death. It was all around them. And they couldn't escape it at all. We try to live with a kind of anesthesia about death now, but we can't really escape it either. And it comes to us, and it comes to those we love. And I'd like to see if the story here doesn't tell us something about how to live 
in light of the resurrection and in light of life and death. Some people tell the story of Easter as the story of life instead of death. And there are reasons for that in Scripture, but I'd like to suggest to you that the story of Easter and the truth of Easter is not life instead of death, but eternal life in contrast to life and death. It seems to me we have to confess we all live and we all die, and that's the way it is, and it's not going to change. But here in the stories of Jesus, we see an eternal life. The resurrected Lord is not recognizable as the Lord they know or knew. They, they don't see him. He stands there among them. He stands with them. He, he talks with them and walks with them. And they don't see him as the Lord until something happens. He says Mary's name. He says to the, to the disciples, he has to supper with them and he breaks bread. And they're known, he's known to them in the breaking of bread. He's known on the Sea of Galilee. They see him from afar and yet they know him. You see, it isn't about what he looks like. It's, it isn't, you can't just recognize one in eternal life under the same guise as that of life and death. Something else intercedes. Something else transforms the moment. And I'd like to try to at least point to it. In death, Jesus is not in death. He is he's eating. This is no ghost who appears. This is no phantom or phantasm. This is not an illusion. He eats real fish with real people who know him. And even though they do not necessarily recognize him, they know him. It's not, it's not about death. It's not about life. He isn't, it isn't the same life. This is not the same, same person that they have seen before. Something has changed, and that change is critical to our faith and to our life together. You and I will die. Some of us, sadly, may die as a result of this virus. All of us will probably, in the long run, know someone who dies as a result of this virus. That's the way they are. But I'd like to suggest to you that our experience of life and death, because we know it to be temporary, this life we have, and we know it to be certain, this death we will experience. It makes life fragile. It makes life precious. It makes life temporary. And what gives life its fullest strength as eternal life is what? Here, I want to say love. I know you can read the story about the disciples going to the tomb and the one that Jesus loved runs, loved runs ahead and then doesn't go into the tomb and steps back and Peter goes into the tomb and yes, that's all to prove that Peter has greater authority in the church than John does. That's the way the story goes. But that's not the story. That's not the message. The message here is that in the moments that people recognized the fullness of their love and the fullness of Jesus' love for them in the speaking of their name, in the breaking of bread, in the offering of himself, in those moments of deep, great love, that's where they recognize that this is the resurrected one. That's where eternal life arises in the midst of life and death. And that's the message for today. You and I have those experiences. We have those moments. Think about it. When you really experience true, 
deep love, and you suddenly recognize that life and death are different because of something that you've just experienced. Whether it is that you've fallen in love, whether it is that you've seen a child, a newborn child that you love, these are your experiences. They are intimate, and that's the way they're meant to be. My point here is that life and death are all part of life. But eternal life, eternal life is where eternity breaks into that circle of life and death. And in eternal life, we see Jesus and recognize him as he is. In eternal life, we see each other and recognize us as we are. To that end, God's grace. Amen and amen. Thank you for being with us. My beloveds, arise this day. Go out into the world, but don't leave your house. Embrace others, but stay away from them. Open your heart. Let this day fill you with grace and joy and peace and love. To that end, God's grace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>